Hi, welcome to the college, Wynn College. Uh, this is remedial education. An extra, an extra lecture all about planning and the operational plan. My name's Chris, I'm known as the professor. I'm also the general manager for Wynn College. Okay, so we're having a look at develop the operational plan. The full name is Manage an Operational Plan. What you want to know is, what's an operational plan? Good question. Think of uh, the operational plan as being something that requires, for example, in a business, it's, well, how the business works. Let's say, for example, uh, let's make it personal. I like to make it personal. You get up in the morning, you come to college, or you go to work. You have a plan. Most people, it's the same plan. That plan is uh, usually out of bed, go to the toilet, brush your teeth, shave your face, jump in the shower, put on your clothes. If you're a woman, you might put on some makeup, go out to the kitchen, make yourself breakfast, you know what time you have to leave the house, and off you go. That's your operational plan for getting out of the house in the morning. Now, for example, you might say, well, you know, that's just what I do. That's what everybody does. But then you break it up. Think about the resources that you require. You need a shower. You need toothpaste, a toothbrush. Um, you might, uh, you need to obviously breakfast or there are contingency plans. You have to wash your hair. Something took a little bit longer. You woke up late. What's your contingency plan? Your contingency plan, the word for contingency is really great. The word for contingency is the what if. What if you woke up late? You have to change your operational plan. Maybe you'll, if you're really late, <laughs> forget the shower, brush your teeth on the way to running to the bus. If you're not so late, you might say, okay, I'll have breakfast at work. What can I cut out? What can I change? Your contingency plan for, for example, I have an electric toothbrush. What do I do if it's dead? Contingency plan for that is, I'll go the manual toothbrush. Sometimes if I've been going out somewhere, my contingency plan is going to the dentist. Oh, damn it, I forgot to bring my toothbrush to work. I don't know who hasn't done this. Sometimes I've actually got some toothpaste. And... Right? My contingency plan. Okay? I was short on resources. I had to come up with another resource. In this case, my resource is my finger. Okay? Uh, so, what we're going to do in this unit, okay, is it's broken down into three chapters. First chapter, develop an operational plan. So basically that means to come up with the plan. We're going to add a little bit to that. What you're actually going to do is recognize. We're going to make sure that you recognize the operational plan for what it is. In the second chapter, we're going to do how to manage resources. Plan, it, plan and manage those resources. In other words, what do you need? In the third chapter, we're going to monitor and review the performance. These sound very, very kind of scary and businessy. My job is to break that down and make it really simple. Most people actually have an operational plan. I just pointed out that your breakfast or your morning routine is usually your operational plan for the morning. It's also called a standing plan. A standing plan is different from uh, if you like a moving or a variable plan because it doesn't change much. You do it every day. It's a standing plan. My, my alarm goes off, I hit the snooze button, that's 10 minutes, I hit the snooze button again, that's 20 minutes, then I have to get up, I wake up. Generally speaking, the standing plan is pretty much always the same. In most offices and businesses, there is a standing plan. What do you normally do? If you were to set up a business, 
one of the difficult things is to come up with, and you forget about this, all the little things that make up that business, those resources. So you think, oh yeah, I could set up a business, well maybe a restaurant, and or maybe it would be a, a, a small shop. And then when you actually go and set it up, you find out that, uh, well, you need things like pencils, uh, a cash register, cash register tape or ribbon, an FPOS machine. And to get an FPOS machine, you need a bank account. And, uh, and then, of course, then, uh, sometimes, uh, as, you did, as I did, I started up a new business. I bought a business. The changeover was at 12 o'clock. It was actually a salon, a hairdressing salon. Believe it or not, I used to be a hairdresser. Bought my own business. Paid, you know, paid tens of thousands of dollars. Walked in, the changeover was two o'clock. I was ready. The business was already operating. I thought it was going great. I walked in and the lady uh, said, changeover, she said, thank you very much, here you go. Oh, I'm taking my FPOS machine with me because I get money back on that. And I was like, Oh dear, F boss, I can't take credit cards. You fool, you fool, you fool. I had to race across to the bank and they said, this, this takes months to set up. You fool, you fool, you fool. And then, she, and then the first question she said, of course, I usually have a float, in other words, money that I leave in the till so I can give change first in the morning. I'll take that with me as well. Did I have a float? Did I have $200 to throw into the till for change? No. Oh my God, you fool, you fool, you fool. I thought I was ready. So many things I didn't have. I just didn't have, I just, I hadn't planned for all the resources I needed. You know when else you do an operational plan? Going on a holiday. As an international student, when you came to Australia, you were, had, had to think about everything you would bring with you. Because if you didn't bring it with you, it was going to be very, very difficult to get it sent later on. You know, how about working out, hmm, okay, I can take 20 kilos in my bag. Do I take jeans? Is it going to be hot? Is it going to be rainy? Is it going to be cold? All those things that you go through. And, uh, and in, in this uh, first chapter, we have a look at contingency planning, that what if. When you're packing to go on a holiday, who doesn't go, well, I need the umbrella? What if? Or maybe I go, okay, I won't take the umbrella, it's too big, I'll take a poncho instead, a plastic sheet. Okay, that's my contingency plan, in case it rains. Sometimes they kind of like, okay, I'll take a, a rug and a pair of shorts in case it rains. Or I take a pair of board shorts that look like normal shorts. So therefore, uh, I've got a better use of resources. All these things that we do. So when you have your business or when you're within a company, managing your operational plan, you have to recognize what the plan is. What do you got to do day by day? What do you require to do that day by day? Electricity. If it's an office, you'll need a desk. Um, when you organize your plan, and you'll have to do that for one of your assessments, don't forget, it's all very well to say, oh, well, I need a computer. Yeah, computer's great, if you don't, but what if you don't have software? What if you don't have electricity? You can have a computer and no internet. Oh, well, I'm going to have internet, right? How do you get internet? You don't have a phone line. Oh, yeah, I'm going to have a phone line. Yeah, I'm going to do all those things. Okay, so those are part of your operational plan. Very, very important. Those are the details. It's okay. We walk through all those things with you. Part two obviously that plan and manage resources and that includes material resources desks computers um, all the things you see around the classroom uh, facilities or if, for example if you've got a you know construction business 
you might have to buy a tractor. What kind of tractor do you need? Does it have to have a back hoe, front hoe? What kind of uh, plan are you going to do? Uh, do you buy it new? Cost more, but it won't break down. Do you need a spare? What about tools? All those sort of things. Now they're just the materials. Then you need to start thinking about the really tricky ones. You know that there are tools and resources out there that are a real pain. There's a tool out there with a personality. It's called a human or staff. They're a resource that you have to handle as well. Believe you me, I think I'd rather handle a hammer than a staff member because the hammer doesn't talk back. The hammer doesn't get sick. The hammer doesn't feel a little bit, I don't feel like hitting that nail. Or, you know, it's kind of late, I'd really rather not hit that nail. Okay, a hammer just does what it's supposed to do. You can get a good hammer, good hammer just does it. However, obviously human resources are very, very important, but they take a great deal of managing. And they're also very expensive. So you don't want to waste them. And in fact, part of that managing them is making sure that you don't waste them. How can I get the most, the best, out of my human resources? In one of the chapters that we work in, in one of the units that you do in Diploma, of leadership and management we did before, which was emotional intelligence. That was all about how to also get the most out of your team. So that plan and manage resources, it's so important. For example, if you're at a mining company, you know, and you're mining under the ground for coal, that uh, coal mining machine probably is worth around about a hundred million dollars. It takes four months to assemble. They assemble it in the middle of the mine. You don't want that baby breaking down. It runs 24 hours a day. And if it takes six months to move to a different mine, you want to be pretty damn sure when you decide to move it. And you have to manage what you're going to do while it's moved. We'll look at, um, in one of your uh, uh, assessments, in assessment two, it's a field trip. And it's a field trip, we have a look at the Opera House, Sydney Opera House, world-renowned building. They have, uh, Sydney Opera House is turning 50 in 2023. They have a plan, it's called the Renewal Plan. They're going to renew the Opera House. Turns 50 years old, it's getting pretty old. When they built the Opera House, they weren't thinking about, you know, diversity, the environment, all those things. They weren't thinking about then. This is like the 50s and 60s. They were thinking about just making a building look pretty. Now they have to change it. They've got to think about that. So they have a very big operational plan. When we have a look at the excursion, you have a look at what their operational plan is, and they have several for 2023. They're going to completely and utterly rebuild the concert hall inside. That means that they can't hold concerts and this thing's booked out three years in advance. Once again, almost every day of the year, there's a concert being hold, held somewhere. They're going to put it on hold for six months. And you might say, oh, well, okay. But where are the people that would normally go to that concert and perform in that concert hall? Where are they going to perform now? It's not like we have another concert hall sitting around the corner. They actually have to manage that whole process. We haven't even gotten to the construction part, let alone what are people going to do in construction with a building that's 50 years old, a national icon? What if they make a mistake? The whole thing goes up in flames. Or all the work that they do and it doesn't work. 
It's no longer the uh, a concert hall. The acoustics are all wrong. My God, there's so many problems that could go wrong. And of course, if there is a problem, imagine if there's a gas leak and an explosion. It'll be world news. So the construction crews have to be careful that they don't damage the outside, that they don't damage the look. It's a heritage listed building. They can't change it. Everything has to be, it, it's a huge job. That's why I'm not giving it to you as a full assessment. Uh, we're just going to have a look at a, a tiny part of it. You'll have a look at their, their, con, their plans. Uh, you'll have an opportunity in the excursion to ask them about, you know, their contingency plans. And also, don't forget, we're all big boys here. We're all adults. This is diploma and this is business. I'll give you a clue. It makes the world go round and it's not love. Money. Don't forget the money. Business doesn't. Your boss doesn't. Any student that says to me, ah, oh, the money's not such a big deal, and I'll say, I'll tell, you, I'll tell your boss that next time they go to pay you. That money's not a big deal. Obviously, money is a huge deal. You have to cost these things. Everything costs. In Diploma of Leadership and Management, you are expected to have a budget to start thinking about the money. Uh, estimating how much things are cost, all these resources, how to get the most out of these resources, things that you can use again. So we'll talk about budgets as well. And then of course, your plan is under constant review. Wouldn't it be? I'm always looking for a way to shave, well, because I'm an old man, I pretty much got it down to the fastest way I could possibly do it. Shaving an extra couple of minutes off my morning routine. I mean, okay, I'm not going to be so gross as to try to go to the toilet and brush my teeth at the same time. It might save me time, but yeah, it's, a little un it's a little unsanitary. But I have been known to kind of brush my teeth, leave the toothbrush in, I'm shaved at the same time. And then I can sometimes go, well, hell, if I shave, brush my teeth, go into the shower at the same time, I can kind of like shave, wash my face, goggle out of the shower, rinse out my mouth, and I've done all three things at the same time to cut myself some time. Not usually a standing plan. It's something I do when I'm really, really running late. I still have to brush my teeth, it's probably a date. Okay, so I can't go out with stinky breath. I have to brush my teeth, but I also have to have a shower because I'm all sweaty from doing stuff in the yard. Okay, I tend to try to do three things at once. I've got five minutes to do it all. So I'm always finding out little ways, ways to just squeeze a little bit more time and make my morning ritual just a little bit more efficient. And you should see me in the kitchen with breakfast. Coffee machine on, toaster in, put the stuff in, make my lunch, get the toaster, leg foot down, everything's doing something else at the same time I'm doing something else. It's all about trying to make my standing operational plan in the mornings just that little bit more efficient. So when you're thinking about manage an organizational plan, of operational plan, take it back and just think about your morning routine. Then put it into a business perspective. In fact, in your uh, first so assessment one is Q&A. It's a quiz. Assessment one, you know we have five assessments. Assessment one is a Q&A. Are you going to be asked about what is an operational plan? What is a contingency plan? It's all right, you can stop and pause and this video and go back and answer those questions. Obviously in your own words, please. But uh, it's a Q&A all about operational plans. Assessment two is that field trip, or if you're out of the country and you're doing this online, a presentation, a PowerPoint display, where you actually present your operational plan for the Opera House 
to your staff members or to your assessor. And you come up with your plan. Once again, noting resources, how you're going to use them, money, and then also, most importantly, how you're going to continue to monitor, look at your plan, see how it's running, and review. Num assessment number three, <clears throat> we have several case studies. They're case studies about businesses that have problems, or they're looking at their things, and usually the question is, how would you change this operational plan? Or what would you do with this operational plan? Or identify what the contingency plan is in the, stake, in the case study. So uh, fairly good, easy, they're great case studies, I've read through them, had a look at them. Okay, once again, really easy. Don't forget if you have any problems at all, you can always contact your student support officer and uh, just email them, ask them what your query is, uh, and don't forget we're here to help you. So, now assessment number three, as I said, it's a case study. So you've got your third party report. Don't forget, take them to your boss. Um, we've written it in plain English so that your boss knows that you're going to be asking questions about what resources do I need to do my job? And it could be anything. You could be working in a, in a fruit store and they'll say, oh, well, you've got a truck, you've got a, 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 we got stalls, we obviously need a till. You could be working in a factory. Well, we need a forklift. We need pallets. We need uh, places to put all the stock. Big garage door, big building. Whatever those resources are, you'll be able to name them. Now we come to the final assessment. Whew, tricky one. What are we going to do for that final assessment? Well, actually, this is not too bad. You're going to go back to your business, wherever you work. You're going to describe and look at it, you know, analytically as where I work now, I'm going to look at it as an operational plan. Have a look at the overall operational plan. Then you're going to look at one small part of it. Now, I'll make an example for you. Uh, like if I was doing the assessment, maybe I'm delivering pizzas. I'm Deliveroo. Okay? I've got my bicycle, my heat pack, my helmet, and I deliver pizzas. That's an operational plan. How many people deliver the pizzas? Am I the only one? What sort of bike do I use? What's my heat pack like? Occupational health and safety, okay? The last thing you want is your pizza delivery driver killing themselves, okay? Horrible situation. Blood all over the pizza. Nobody wants to eat it, and you'll never get a tip. That's supposed to be a joke. Um, but in reality, of course, uh, yeah, you want to look after your staff. You want to look after yourself. So we ask you to take, you're going to take that operational plan, that little, little part of the operational plan, and we're going to ask you to have a look at all things and see if you can find a way to make it better. I bet you can. You'll now know how to make it better. And if I've done my job right, and the teachers have done their job right, you're going to go to your boss and say, hey boss, I've got a better way to do this. We'll make more money. It'll be faster, quicker, easier, and yeah, more profit. Are you interested? And your boss, of course, will go, are you crazy? Of course I'm interested. Show me. And you'll be able to show them a professional, business-like, operational plan. And if they don't give you a pay rise, if they don't offer you whatever it is that you're wanting to be offered, take your operational plan and take it to the pizza shop down the road and sell it to them. So what you'll do is you'll come up with your new operational plan. You'll have to answer questions about how you're going to review that plan. Now, once again, before you start getting excited about, oh, it's too big, okay? Think about it in terms of that small thing that you're going to change. Okay, it could be, do I need to buy a new bike? Do I need to buy more safety equipment? Do I need to buy better materials, etc.? Maybe a fridge pack so I can start selling Cokes on the side. I don't know. But we give you all those tools and of course you'll have to have a contingency plan. What do you do when you get out to your bike, your pizza delivery driver, and it's got a flat? Do you have a contingency plan? I know you can get them. You can get uh, foam filled things. <laughs> 
whole tyre fills up with foam, you're on your way. And you'll just have to buy another tyre later on. That might be a contingency plan. Anyway, that is manage operational plans. I hope you've had as much fun as I have, and I hope you know a little bit more about managing operational plans. Good luck in your assessment, and don't forget to ask for our help if you need it.